So we are just a few days away from the NBA draft and rumors are picking up steam, flying like crazy about uh, potential moves, teams that are looking to trade up or down in the draft. There's this bizarre Chet Holmgren story going around about how he apparently like hasn't done any workouts or media for teams, hasn't done, um, like hasn't submitted like a heart report or something which I feel like would be, you know, bigger news if there was truth, but things are going crazy right now. And in spite of all of that, in the midst of all of that, one story dominated the news all day Monday, and that was Kyrie Irving in the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> um, you would have thought it unfathomable uh, this time last year with the big three of James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving looking like they were ready to just dominate the East after coming super close to making the uh, Eastern Conference Finals uh, the year before. And instead, this year, everything is derailed. James Harden's now in Philly, and the reports today are that the Nets are resistant, hesitant, uh, don't want to sign Kyrie to that long-term max deal that he is now eligible for. He does have a player option um, to decide if he wants to opt in or out, and it's kind of becoming more and more um, assumed that he's going to opt out and that there's a chance that, you know, he could leave this team high and dry. Uh, Shams is the one who reported it Monday morning that um, the two sides, the words, the phrase he used was the two sides are at an impasse in bringing him back to the Nets. And that's crazy because the whole reason he's there is essentially because of Kevin Durant. He's there because Kevin Durant wanted to play with Kyrie Irving, and he wanted to play with Kyrie Irving in Brooklyn. So Brooklyn uh, sacrificed all of their young players, or almost all of them, to bring the two of them there, then sacrificed the rest of their young players to get James Harden for about a year uh, until that soured. And now, only, only three years after Kyrie and KD first teamed up, this could be it. It could be over. I'm hesitant to believe that they would just, you know, part ways because he's there because Kevin Durant wants him there. And obviously the Nets are going to want to keep Kevin Durant happy. So unless KD is like, yeah, that's fine. I can't imagine them just deciding on their own. Hey, yeah, we'll let Kyrie just go because then you run the risk of alienating Durant. And the next thing you know, you're back in rebuild mode, and you don't have any young players, really. And more importantly than that, you don't have any draft capital left because you used it all in the James Harden trade and then trading James Harden again for Ben Simmons. So there is a chance that this team could be over before it even really got started. That first year is, is kind of a nothing because Kevin Durant missed the whole year rehabbing from his torn Achilles. Kyrie only played 20 games that first year because of injuries. And so really you're looking at two years with both of those guys in and out of the lineup. Kyrie is one of the most, I'm, I'm going to say injury prone, but like one of the most like player, like one of the players with the most missed games due to injury in his career. Like he has not played 70 games or more, I think more than three times and he's 29 years old now. He will be 30 next year. He just missed half of the Nets games this year, not because of injury, but because of the the um, vaccine mandates and policies. And it's he's just a wild card. It's been reported that Nike is gonna um, let his deal lapse, and like that'll be it when his contract expires. Despite the fact that he has one of like the top three selling shoes in Nike, like it's just crazy what is happening right now. And to take it back to the Nets, they're in a tough spot because, you know, four years ago, they had that Nets team that everyone loved with D'Angelo Russell, Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Jared Dudley, Torian Prince, all of those guys. And they had that good, fun chemistry. They had Theo Pinson dancing on the side. Like, they made the playoffs with that 42-40 record. And then next thing you know, the next year, almost all of those guys are gone. Dinwiddie's hurt, and Kenny Atkinson, the coach who orchestrated this turnaround and helped build that chemistry, is gone because the team brought in Katie and Kyrie, who wanted to play there because of that chemistry, but it was clear that, you know, Kenny Atkinson 
wasn't going to be the guy for the job. So they bring in Steve Nash, who I'm sure was handpicked by both of those guys, if not just Kevin, who worked with him uh, during his Golden State years, and they were off. And now, I don't know how true it is. I mean, I know Stephen A. Smith has sources, but earlier on Monday, he did also say that he heard that um, Kyrie Irving would hold his own practices after Steve Nash's team practices. Like, he'd just grab some guys and be like, all right, let's go practice, you know, for real. Let's go practice some stuff. And, like, if that type of, like, undermining is going on and everything, like, the Nets organization is one that has not been traditionally um, willing to deal with stuff like that. Like, since Sean Marks took over, since Joe Sai bought the team, they've been really, like, committed to the, I guess, the foundation, the belief, the the Brooklyn Nets uh, fundamentals. Like, Kenny Atkinson was notorious for benching, you know, star players if they weren't playing well or if they were in their head or if they were you know just not having a good night like he had no problem doing that and it was part of what made that team so fun was that on any given night any one of their players could be the guy and now instead they traded everything and they cashed in all of the chips which i mean in theory that's what you do but this is the downside like this is what can go wrong is now they're sitting at three years uh not getting any further in the playoffs than the eastern conference semis which they lost to Milwaukee because Kevin Durant wears like a half a size shoe too big. Um, And now here we are. They might never make a finals together. They might never make an Eastern Conference finals together. And before you know it, the Nets are going to be, you know, they could be looking at a full rebuild. So it's just really interesting. And of course, as soon as the rumors go around that Kyrie Irving and the Nets may be heading towards this divorce. Two names pop up. You already know it. You love it. It's the New York Knicks and the Los Angeles Lakers. <sighs> Nothing says peak NBA like Kyrie traded straight up for Russell Westbrook, and then we get the Braun, Kyrie, KD, and Russ reunions. That would be incredible. I think if that happened, KD would absolutely be like, get me the hell out of here. But Braun and Kyrie would be so interesting, except as a Lakers fan, I don't need Kyrie and his history of missing games pairing up with Anthony, I haven't shot a basketball since April, Davis, and his missed games. Um, I just don't want it. I want some black magic to occur that ends up with Bradley Beal in a Lakers jersey. And I go buy every color of the jersey, and I'm just happy. I'm just happy to watch Bradley Beal score, you know, 25 a game, night in, night out. That's the perfect Utopia Lakers world. But because it's the Lakers, because it's LeBron, if Kyrie's going anywhere, he's probably going to end up in purple and gold. It makes the most sense. I saw someone say Houston. That'd be beautiful, too. I would love to watch Kyrie with all of those young players because it was great in Boston. He took on that mentor role. He really helped those guys. And I just, I can't imagine what would happen on that team as well. Um, uh, But again, contract wise, John Wall. But Houston, like any team paying him that amount of money is going to have to know one, that they can expect him to buy in, and two, they're going to have to gamble that he's able to play when they need him. So the Lakers probably make the most sense because he did have his best years, arguably, while he was playing with LeBron. Um, And that's, you know, they have their title. They had a great one-two combination together. And Kyrie was honestly exactly what um, LeBron needed at the time to, you know, help lighten the load, help him save himself for those fourth quarter runs and those, those big spot moments. And I think, you know... In theory, he would be good on this Lakers team, too, because, I mean, you can't ask LeBron and Anthony Davis to do everything. You can't ask 37-year-old LeBron and just trying to stay healthy Anthony Davis to do that much um, throughout the regular season especially. But you're risking it because Kyrie could easily, you know, tweak something or have a knee issue flare up or who knows. He might just not want to play. Like, anything that happens with him... I will believe it. Like, he's entered a point where, like, I could wake up tomorrow and read that he retired, and I wouldn't really be shocked. Like, he'd be like, okay, yeah, sounds about right. 
So it's just it's it's really interesting, and it's gonna put the Nets in such a hard spot because now they're gonna probably have to look to you know send him out or overpay him and like sweat bullets that him and KD can stay healthy. Then they have to worry about Ben Simmons coming back. So that's almost all of their cap space tied up into those three guys. Their bench depth was terrible last year, partly because of injuries, partly because of age. But these are all questions and concerns that Nets fans didn't think they were going to have to have until like 2028 or like later on when like both of these guys were near the end of their careers. So to be confronted with that right now after three straight years of early playoff exits is a disappointment for sure. And on top of all of that, you see, you know, Kenny Atkinson win a, t- uh, win a title with the Warriors. You see all the young players that were on the Nets that are thriving elsewhere. You have Jared Allen in Cleveland, just got paid a huge deal. Karis LeVert just ended up in Cleveland as well. D'Angelo Russell, Spencer Dinwiddie just had a playoff run. Like, you have all of these former players there thriving elsewhere. And then you have, you know, this supposed super team just can't get out of the starting gate. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens because I'm sure nothing is going to happen unless KD gives his approval. And honestly, too, you have no idea what KD's thinking at a given moment as well. So we'll see. I, I trust Shams um, to, to be pretty plugged in when it comes to that stuff. Um, so I'm sure there's some truth to this hesitancy. And honestly, it's justified. But even even still, like in the NBA world, like even publicizing that hesitancy could burn that bridge. Like egos and, and everything runs so wild in professional sports that just the, the mention of, hey, we're not sure if we want to give this guy like the full amount of money because of these legitimate concerns, that could like drive a wedge between not only the team and Kyrie and his agent, but then also Kevin Durant and his team. So then you're looking at, okay, well, we are like voicing these real concerns, but everyone's mad now that we're voicing these concerns and their relationship could go up in smoke any minute. So it's going to be a really interesting tightrope walk here for Sean Marks. And it's sad to say that they kind of put themselves in this position. Um, I mean, like I said, the name of the game is to win championships. And they built that goodwill over the years and traded that in for a chance to go to the next level and to chase championships. And it just hasn't worked out, whether it's injuries, bad luck, um, like I said, KD's foot on the line for that one shot. Like, it's been nothing but but bad luck for them pretty much since the get-go with this unit. So we'll see what happens. Um, I really have no idea. I think Shams is is, uh, onto something. I'm sure the Lakers are probably the team that would make the most sense because I don't see a world where the Nets help the Knicks, uh, even though paying Kyrie Irving two hundred and eleven million dollars and he decides to like skip games because he's like sore or something's going on, like that would be like the most Knicks thing ever. So I could see them sending him over there just as like almost like an agent of chaos, just to see what happens. Um, but we'll see. I mean, obviously it's those two teams. Of course, it's those two teams interested. Wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and I think that's everything. Let me know your thoughts on Kyrie. If you think we'll see him, um, traded either before the draft or sometime before, uh, training camps and everything start, please let me know what you think about, uh, just the Nets, Nets fans. If you're out there, please sound off. It's a safe place. I'm sorry that you have to go through this. Um, hang in there. Thank you very much for watching and I will be back.